Hello, I'm State Representative Ryan Ahmed of the 41st Legislative District, Lancaster County. Welcome to my new series, Fact Versus Fiction, where we will explore different state-related subjects and talk to knowledgeable guests to help us discern the truth. We're joined today by Pennsylvania Deputy Secretary for Elementary and Secondary Education, Carolyn Dumaresk, who is here to talk about a topic that is currently getting a lot of attention throughout our state. Common Core is the establishment of statewide academic standards for math and English, and as Pennsylvania moves toward full implementation of these standards, many are asking lawmakers about the impact they may have on our Commonwealth schools. Thank you for joining me today, Secretary Dumaresk. If you could explain exactly what the Common Core academic standards are and how they apply to our Pennsylvania schools. Fine. Thank you so much for having me here today. The Pennsylvania Common Core Standards are a uh, set of improved academic standards, which I have with me today, that are intended to raise the rigor of the education that our students receive in Pennsylvania. Uh, what these standards do is set a clear set of expectations of what students should know and be able to do before they graduate from a Pennsylvania public school. And we hope that that will help them to be more successful in any post-secondary endeavor, whether that would be in straight to work, into the military, or through post-secondary education, reducing the amount of remediation that would need to occur. There's some talk that this is a, um, is a federal intrusion, that this is an attempt at nationalized uh, academic standards. If you could talk a little bit about the history of standards here in Pennsylvania and the history of the, the Common Core uh, movement and how that relates to the Pennsylvania Common Core. Great, thank you. Um, first of all, we've had standards since 1999 when Pennsylvania first adopted its set of reading and math standards. And they, again, were to be the floor, what minimally um, school districts, public school districts, would do to when they adjust their curriculum and purchase textbooks. Um, and obviously, as the world of work, uh, work becomes more complex or their standards are raised in higher ed, you need to adjust those graduation visions. So in, 19, in 2008, the Department of Education through the State Board began, uh, again, its work with the public school uh, community, teachers, principals, to readjust those academic standards to, again, raise the rigor from the first ones in 1999. As that work was occurring, <coughs> there was a, a movement uh, among the governors of all the states and the state secretaries of education to say, well, you know, in some states, it's, uh, the, the standards are very low, and in others, they're, they're very high. And we were hearing from the higher ed community uh, across the, the, the nation and also uh, the business community that we needed to have some kind of uh, understanding of a floor for all students um, in, our, in our great nation. So at that point in time, uh, they engaged educators from, ac from across the country, and Pennsylvania was watching that work, and they adopted something called the Common Core Standards. Again, standards from pre-K to 12 on what students should be able to do before they graduate from a, a public school in, in our nation. At that point, our state board said our work um, and their work looked very similar. So they, ad they adopted the Common Core that what, from the National Governors Association. Of course, being a fiercely local control state in Pennsylvania, um, the state board heard from educators in, in our state that said, you know, our academic standards that we've been working on uh, in 2008, we believe in some cases is more rigorous and is better for Pennsylvania students. So we invited, again, teachers and administrators, uh, higher ed uh, representatives, into write um, Pennsylvania's version of the Common Core, where they looked at where we were with our academic standards, where the Common Core was, and said, what's best for Pennsylvania students? And thus emerged from that effort, um, which is what is before uh, the legislature and um, the in Independent Regulatory Review Commission now, Pennsylvania's Common Core, a more rigorous set of standards for our students. You make a couple of important points there, I think. First, um, there's been some talk that uh, Pennsylvania educators were not involved in this process. Um, and you sort of highlighted that. Can you talk a little bit about the process here in Pennsylvania and yes. Pennsylvania educators and education experts that were involved in this process? I can because I was the one that helped to organize those committees. So I was there while it was happening. We wanted to make sure that um, when we were looking at something that would affect all Pennsylvania schools as far as the standards, the minimal standards, school boards always have the right to add. And I would add many of our very high performing schools have added to those standards along the way. And we invited teachers in from uh, 
all grade levels from math, now in math and then in reading and higher ed professors so that they would have a sense of what students need when they would uh, enter into post-secondary education. And they looked at the, the words uh, of the standards to say what exactly is it that, that students should be able to know and do. And that, that, that process took months and months to evolve into the, the new standards. We've been throwing out around these terms standards and, and curriculum, and so I think it's important um, to distinguish between standards, an academic standard, an academic concept, and curriculum. Can you talk about that a little bit? Um, what are these academic standards? How does that r relate to locally designed curriculum, and then how does that then relate to the assessment tool that will be the, the, the Keystone exam here in Pennsylvania? Right an excellent point. The standards, um, if I use a sports analogy, um, is the goal line. It's what students need to achieve. So for example, in first grade, if you would look through the standards that are published on the State Board of Education's website for the public to see. So in kindergarten we might say students need to be able to count to 10. Um, and by second grade they need to be counting by 100 and adding and subtracting um, two digit numbers. They're the standards that students should be able to meet to, to stay on course for grade level or reading. It's up to the local school districts to say, what textbooks are we going to supply? What instructional strategies are we going to employ? What's the curriculum look like to keep these children on track? That has always been and will always be a local decision governed by local school boards, elected school boards. So while we set what the goal line needs to be, all the plays that get you there, whether it be the curriculum, the texts, or the instructional strategies are developed at the local level. Yes, I, I, I think it's an important point um, to, to make that, um, as, as I, and I've had the opportunity to view the standards and look at them and, and compare them to what, um, what has been recommended nationally. These are state-designed standards, state Pennsylvania academic standards, and our local communities now have the opportunity and have been at this work now. A number of school districts have been very proactive in, in, in aligning curriculum, a locally designed curriculum, um, to, to meet the new Pennsylvania academic right. standards. There's been some talk about the, the, the cost of this, this, this transition. Mm -hmm. And what's often lost in that is the significant investment that local school districts have already made in curriculum development, locally designed curriculum, to align to these new standards. Um, can you talk a little bit about that, the, um, you know, the point that somehow this is going to be um, an extremely expensive endeavor um, and, that the, uh, and also about the investment that has already been made um, throughout this transition? Um, having been a superintendent, I know that inside school district's budgets, um, you always have uh, put money aside for textbooks and supplies. You do that on a cycle, usually three to five year cycle, as you look at your materials and your textbooks to purchase. You also have professional development that you give for your teachers. Um, as you know, teacher contracts go beyond the, the minimum number of instructional days, and that's usually for professional development. So the state board was very um, sensitive to the additional burden and costs that that would put on districts. And that is why when they adopted the, the standards in 2010, they gave a three-year runway for the standards to be adopted um, coming this, this fall in, in 2013. In order for school districts to use that money and adjust their, their professional development and their, the money that they've already budgeted for textbooks and supplies, so that they could focus on reading and math and getting those aligned. I will say some districts have, have been at this work for three years um, and some had minor changes because their standards are already more rigorous. Mm -hmm. I was just with uh, a group of superintendents last evening mm -hmm. who, and I asked them that very same question, and they have been extremely proactive in recent years to, um, to adjust their curriculum and to prepare for this implementation. And when I asked them what would be the impact now to un unwind this, um, they, they were just, they, they stated very clearly it would have a tremendous um, negative detrimental impact uh, on the work that they've already done. And without hesitation, each of the superintendents, and there were four in the room that I talked to, um, said that these standards very clearly, uh, particularly in math, are more rigorous than, than, what, uh, than, than what we've had. So I think that's an important point uh, to be made. There's been some, uh, I've heard also from another of a number of constituents who've expressed concern over da data collection. 
and the privacy rights of students. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? And you know, the Common Core, as I understand it, does not include any new data collection. Is that is that correct? That's absolutely correct. Um, the state, in fact, only collects data in the aggregate, numbers of students who have graduated on time, um, those types of things, but nothing new in, in and this, again, the standards are there and the implementation of those standards have been very transparent. There's no new data collection. There's no intrusion uh, into uh, family life or uh, personal issues that some are very, very worried about, which I share as, as a mother of children who went through uh, the public schools in Pennsylvania. I would find that uh, to be very distasteful and that is not occurring. I've also heard from a number of folks concerned that the English standards of Common Core require um, a, a reading of certain text or a mandated required reading list. Can, can you address that specific yeah. issue? I'd be happy to, and it, it kind of reflects back to on onto the other question about data collection and mandatory textbooks. I think it's important for um, folks who have that concern in Pennsylvania to be very careful that they don't confuse what's happening in other states with what's happening in Pennsylvania. There are some states that have mandatory curriculums, that have mandatory reading lists. Again, in Pennsylvania, we are a very strong local control state. Those decisions of what textbooks to read, what uh, reading books, what the curriculum, is a local decision. It is not controlled by the state, nor will it be. It looks like that's all the time we have for today. I'd like to thank my guest, Deputy Secretary Carolyn Dumaresk, for joining me in an attempt to present the facts and dispel myths surrounding the Pennsylvania Common Core standards. Should you have any further questions or concerns about the Pennsylvania standards or any other state-related issue, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you for joining me for Fact versus Fiction.